and we carry on with our explanation for chapter two railway uh, rolling stock systems and we have reached section eight uh, rolling stock maintenance and without further ado let's start talking about this section so the concepts that we'll be talking about in this section are expectations from maintenance there are customer's expectation and operator expectation. We need to understand those in more details. Then we'll be talking about modern concepts in maintenance. Also we'll be talking about types of maintenance and maintenance facility layout and equipment. So we will be looking at what does a depot have and the depot is the place where you would be having the train maintenance in and it has a group of equipment, so we will be mentioning those in details. So without further ado, do, and with these nice pictures, let's start. So what are the customer's expectations from maintenance? Customers expect to have their trains always on time. They expect them to be clean, and they expect them to be defect-free. They don't want their trains to have a fault while they are in them. They want to reach their homes uh, always on time. But also train operators have their expectations. They want maximum train in service. They want the train to stay in service all the time. They don't want to have them in maintenance. They want to have minimum time, maintenance time and cost, and they want to comply with the standards. But how you can have the trains on time clean, defect-free without maintaining them? So you have to maintain them, but it is always a balance. It's always a trade-off between what the operators want and what the customers expect. So with that, you would be having some maintenance regime and maintenance strategy to make sure that you deliver a, a, a proper and a reliable service. So let's talk about some modern maintenance concepts. So these days, maintenance or thinking about maintenance start from the, from the design phase. We want to design the system to be maintainable. We want to design the system to be uh, to the to vehicle to be uh, easily maintained. So from the design from the vehicle design phase, people include the maintenance requirements in there. Also, there is a trend to use diagnostic equipments. So you would have these condition monitoring uh, systems that is always attached to the to your vehicles and give like a health monitoring and health checks of your different systems. But also there is a culture change in the workshop before uh, people, would, if they have a, if they don't have a busy workshop, then uh, they would say they don't have any work to do. So an empty depot is a good thing. So this is like a, a change in culture. Uh, uh, like that encouraging that it would be good that you have your depot empty. This means that actually most of our trains are on service. It's not necessarily that we always have something to do in the depot. So to be able to deliver this maintenance strategy, a lot of people de develop maintenance intervals. And you can see the engineer here is looking at the timetable of uh, different uh, vehicles. And they, he looks at the different checks and different maintenance checks. So let us talk about a sample. And this is from Arriva train uh, Northern. This is just an example. They do a fuel point and this is every 700 miles. And this happens daily on that inspection. They, they, they don't do any inspection, but they report any defects only if investigated. Then you have the A exam. The A exam happens after the, the train finish 6,000 miles. It happens every 10 to 14 days. The inspection is carried to all the uh, subsystems. Then you have a more major maintenance uh, regime, which is the B exam, which can, ha which can happen after 8,000 miles. And it happens monthly, which have more detailed maintenance and more detailed inspection. Now let us talk about some types of maintenance. The, 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 the biggest two are preventive maintenance and corrective maintenance. Preventive maintenance try to maintain the component before it fails. And uh, there are different strategies to, doing, uh, to do that. Sometimes you do it in periodic basis. Sometimes you do it through condition monitoring and expectation. Corrective maintenance happens after uh, failure. And so here uh, in the graph, you can see that 
the blue one, the blue graph talks about cost of preventive maintenance. The red one talks about cost of corrective maintenance. And you have the two axes, one amount of preventive maintenance. So if you just go with, uh, uh, with the corrective maintenance all the time, so you don't do any preventive maintenance. And if you uh, do not do, uh, do not do, uh, uh, so you, yes, you don't, uh, you end up doing no preventive maintenance. And uh, if you do uh, no corrective, uh, if you do, uh, if you do, uh, that, that's, that's with the corrective maintenance. So the, the graph want to say the following, the graph want to say the following that uh, there are a trade-off between corrective maintenance and preventive maintenance, and you need to choose the optimal maintenance zone that allow you to, uh, to have the optimal point, which is optimizes the cost between uh, excessive preventive maintenance and inefficient or insufficient preventive maintenance that will lead to failure, that will lead to service disruptions. Maybe the graph did not illustrate this well, but inefficient preventive maintenance will be costly. Excessive preventive maintenance will be costly too. So you would be needing to do the right amount of preventive maintenance. So concepts in maintenance, one of the most other concepts is the bathtub curve, which, which tells the story of a new system. A new system in service will have few failures at the beginning. Then will it reach a very reliable level of uh, performance until it starts failing again at the end of its life. And it's very much similar to the human being when it's child, it needs support. It needs some kind of uh, uh, nur uh, nourishment, uh, uh, nourishment or uh, 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 care. But, but after uh, the child becomes a man, now he's, uh, re he can rely on himself. He's a reliable person until he reached the, a later stage in his life where he start become unreliable and he needs the support of others. So the bathtub curve talks about the story of new systems until they reach the end of their service. Also the concept of condition monitoring is an important concept which you use sensors to try to detect faults and predict failures before they happen. And sometimes you have automated failure reporting and the other concept is reliability standard maintenance. It's like about and, and it's also now things is associated with assets management in general. It's a, it's a program that uses statistics to predict failures and to try to optimize the uh, total cost, the life cycle cost of maintenance. And it uses different statistics and different methods to deliver that. Other common terminologies of concepts, uh, of concepts in maintenance that is very, very much used the first one is RAMs, RAM or RAMs, which is reliability, availability, maintainability, and is the S is safety. This is a major key performance indicator in any train op operator. And many people use it. They want to measure their reliability. They want to measure their availability, and they want to push the boundaries and to always be to have a, a, a higher reliability, a higher availability, and a higher maintainability. Then you have mean time to failure. And you can see that this is a failure and that's another failure. This is the time between failure. And what is the mean time uh, to failure is the average of all of these times. Then you have mean time to repair, which is this time that uh, you spent repairing the, uh, after the, 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 I think this one, which is after the component fail, then you bring it back to service. How long was it out of service? So what's the mean time to repair? Also, people use failure modes and effects analysis, which is a technique to understand different failures and their impact. Also, they use fault tree analysis to diagnose different faults in different subsystems and how they have the impact on the overall system. Event tree analysis is another method, and here you can see the fault tree diagram. Famica, also failure mode effects and criticality analysis, very much similar to FMEA. Uh, now we'll be talking about the maintenance facility layout and its equipment, uh, the depot. So this is where the maintenance happens. And uh, you would have different equipments and you see these th train trains being lifted. 
So one of the fa famous equipments, a vehicle lifting equipment. So this equipment that lifts the train and the people can work underneath them safely. Then you have, sometimes you have great cranes or bogey drops, which helps in uh, detaching the bogey from the train and uh, fixing it on a separately. Then you have wheel profiling or lathing machine that is responsible for bringing back the profile to the service. Roof access to trains. These, you can see the, the, the stairs here and how people can uh, reach the, uh, the second floor and uh, reach the top, the floor of the train. Also power supply for different equipments. All of these, all of these lines would have different power uh, outlets that would help in, uh, in uh, anyone if you wants to, uh, to use any uh, electrical device. Testing facilities, you would have these places where you can test different components and make sure that they are according to standards and they are uh, uh, still reliable. Also, you would have here machine and carpentry shop or carpentry shop machine and carpentry shops where you would do some uh, work. Also, you would be having a spare parts warehouse. So uh, the worker would be bringing the components. If he needs to replace them, go underneath the train, put the components, fix it then uh, go back and uh, uh, either put the, the, the replaced item or uh, do the remaining work. Then the, trains are, is test, then the trains are tested and then they are declared that they are ready for service. So maintenance, who, 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 do, who, who does this uh, operation? Usually it's done by the operator, sometimes a contractor, a maintenance contractor, and sometimes a train manufacturer. So this is, was a quick introduction to rolling stock maintenance. It's, uh, it's about concepts in maintenance as much as Tebo facility and some of the equipments that is being used in Tebos. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be talking more about uh, chapter two and we'll go to section nine about rolling stock systems and subsystems. We'll see you in the next section. Have a great evening.